Hello everyone. As many of you know, my name is Joel and I'm one of the teens. When I was asked to prepare a topic for one of our hours of prayer tonight, one of the things that came to my mind was God's plan and how sometimes we can see it right in front of us. And sometimes it's harder to see and we may even have doubts of where God's taking us and leading us through the, our journey. As I was looking deeper into this, I realized that we may not always understand. And although that's hard, although it's hard to not know where we're going, it's okay because God has us. The Bible says in Joshua 1, 9, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What this made me realize is even when I can't see what's going on, God already knows and he's gonna be there by my side to walk me through whatever comes. Now, when I was writing all these things down, I started to think of how does this relate to what's going on now? How can we know that what's happening in this day and age is all a part of God's plan and that he's still walking beside us? So I went back to the Bible and in Ephesians 1:11 it says, "All things are done according to God's plan and decisions." And God chose us to be his own people in union with Christ because of his own purpose based on what he had decided from the very beginning. Another one that shows this point is in Jeremiah 29:11, "For I know the plans I have for you," declares the Lord plans of welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, in this time, what I saw is we're all going through different things right now. And whatever we're going through, what this made me realize is God's walking beside us and it's intentionally happening and it's all a part of God's plan. So tonight, let's pray. You can pray with me you can follow along with me. You can listen and pray on your own after, or you can read the words up on the screen. Pray these words. God, help me to feel your reassurance and love. Help me to see the bigger picture as we are moving through the different stages of my life, and more importantly, your plan. Help me in the times where I simply can't understand what is happening. Help me to know that you are with me and you always will be. Help me to know that in the moments of my doubt, you are still there and still love me. Help me to understand the things around me, the things in life with family, friends, work, school. And most importantly, help me to be more like you. Now over the remaining time in this hour, I recommend you to go deeper into this prayer. Maybe instead of just reading the words over and over, make it personal. Ask God these personal questions. Pray with God and figure out what is happening in your life and how that is part of his plan. And then go, truly knowing that God is with you he loves you, and he always will.
Hello, Shawnee family. I am super excited to be connecting with all of you guys today. My name is Emily Arnold and I am one of the teens here at Shawnee. A while back, I was able to lead youth group and lead our other teens what it looks like to prayer journal and a series of prayer journaling prompts. Pastor Amber Lee has asked me to share this message with you all today. I will be using a PowerPoint, which will be made available to all of you guys. Prayer journaling. One verse that has been a very influential verse in my prayer journaling experience is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18, which says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I encourage you guys to ponder and think about what does it mean to pray without ceasing? What does it truly mean to live a life of prayer, of a life of prayer that never ends? We are constantly in prayer. Prayer journaling, how does it work? First, in my prayer journal, which I have, I write down the date. I write down what I am thanking God for and what I am praising God for. And then I will write down my requests. You know, what, what do I think I need right now in my life? I will write down what I'm praying for each day and then I can start to go back and look. Look at my first prayers and see, has God answered my prayer? If God has answered my prayer, I highlight it so it stands out to me the next time. And when God answers a prayer, I reflect. How did God answer my prayer? Did he answer it in a way that I was expecting? Did he say, yes, you can have this? Or did he say, no, no, you don't need what you asked for? Or did he answer my prayer in a way that I didn't know I needed? Or if he hasn't answered my prayer, is this a prayer that I am still asking? The next three prompts are all acronyms. Um, very similar acronyms in that. So here's the SOAP acronym. We start out with scripture, and this could be any scripture you choose. I personally choose the proverb of the day because there's Proverbs 1 through 31, so a proverb for each day of the month, and then a psalm, whatever psalm. And then I will read the scripture. I observe, what do I see, what stands out? And then apply, how does this apply to my life and then I will turn this into a conversation with God I will write it down God I am thankful for this I love the way this verse stated this and then what do I need to pray for because of what did I see in the scripture prayer so this acronym is power and it begins with prayer prayer what is on my heart what questions do i have and then observe observe goes with scripture so another scripture passage of your choice observe what does this verse show me about god write down what verses stood out and why envision how do i see this passage applied to my life and what is this passage describing. When I journal, I don't always journal with just words. I like to draw or paint. Paint what I see in the passage or paint how I'm feeling. And I encourage you to do this if you are an artist. Even if you're not an artist, I encourage you to do this. You might surprise yourself with what you see. And then respond. Respond to God through prayer, thanksgiving, our worship. Again, I don't just write down words. I like to worship. I play piano and guitar and I like to play just basic chords and sing what's on my heart. Not any song that's ever been written, but a song that's just personal, a prayer between me and God. 
grow. First, greet. Invite God into your quiet time by opening in prayer. Read, read a scripture passage silently or out loud a few times. Observe, what stood out to you as you read or have read this passage? Write, write out the verse, your observations and your prayer. Reap, this looks like a lot, but it's really pretty simple. First read, Read a passage with an open heart, asking the Holy Spirit to speak to you. What is happening in this passage? What things are emphasized, repeated, related? What do you see about God? What is God doing? And then what do you see about man? How is man responding to God? Journal all of these things. And then examine. Examine the passage. Examine what you've written already about what you've seen. And then ask yourself these questions and write down your answers you know what is going on in this passage who's the author writing to and why and what is the author writing about why does his audience need to hear these things and then apply meditate on what god is saying to you and how it affects your life ask yourself these questions is there a truth to believe in, a sin to recognize and repent, a promise or a command? What things need to change? And then how can I apply the messages of the text into my life now? And then pray. Pray through the passage in your application. Ask God to change your heart and your life. Next, these 15 prompts are my to-go-to prompts when I am stuck or when I just need to write. It could be any of these prompts. For example, let's do number six. I feel God's presence when, and then fill in the blank. Where do you feel God's presence? Um, maybe 15. God has named me. 15 reminds me of a prompt or of a lesson that hmm, I learned at the call last summer, whereas God has named me beloved. What we did is we wrote on a note card all of the names that had been given to us. For instance, names such as I'm not good enough or names such as I am fearful or unloved. And then we turned our cards in and Ron and Sharon Jackson gave us a card back saying, you are beloved. You are loved by God. In these prompts, I know, or I get to know more about who I am and my desires but I also get to know more about God and what God wants for me. For example, number 11 and number 12, my spiritual calling in life is this, or my spiritual gifts are these. And God can show me who he has made me to be through these prompts and through intentional prayer and gratitude journaling. This one comes from Pastor Kara. Gratitude journaling. What we do is we write down five things that made me smile today, one positive story from today, and three things I am thankful for. Then I will spend time in prayer, thanking God for the day and for everything that has happened that day. And even if it was a very low day and there weren't very many positives, I guarantee you at least five things in the day made you smile. Whether it was the breakfast you had, good breakfast is always a good way to start your day. Or maybe it was the sunset you saw before going to bed or it's spring, the flowers that are growing everywhere. And one positive story from the day. This could be anything. It could be 
a joke one of your coworkers told you, or if you're a teacher, it could be how one of something one of your students had said, and then three things you were thankful for. These could be as simple as I'm thankful for my house or my dog or my family, but it could also be very deep. Like I'm thankful for the ways that God has provided and shown his faithfulness to me today. And then I encourage you to spend time in prayer. Last, as our Shawnee teens have prayed through these prompts together, Pastor Amber Lee challenged us teens to cut out one of these prompts and place it somewhere where we would see it every single day. For some of us, we taped it on our bathroom mirrors because we see our mirror every single day. And for others, we taped it to our steering wheel in our cars. And then when we see this prompt, we are reminded to pray. And I found that if I keep a prompt in my car, I will spend my way, my morning drive to school praying this prompt. So today I am challenging you all to do the same, to take one of these prompts and place it around your house, in your car, if you're a student, in your locker, or if you, if you work somewhere, place it on your desk. And then I encourage you to pray through this prompt, but I also encourage you guys to ponder, what does it truly mean to pray without ceasing? So as you guys embark on your 24 hour Pentecost journey, I hope one of these prompts will resonate with you and help you and guide you through prayer. I also hope that you will be able to continue praying after these 24 hours have ended, that you will continue in your journey and continue to pray without ceasing. I am so thankful for all of you guys, and I will be praying alongside of you today and for many days to come. I love you, Shawnee family, and hope to see you all very soon.
Hi Shawnee family. The prayer I have chosen to lead you in during this hour is one that I have been taught my whole life, a prayer walk. I find prayer walks both peaceful and meaningful for me. Since we're in a time of social distancing, I wanted to guide you in a makeshift prayer walk. Throughout my day, whenever I see something that needs to be prayed for, I'll just say a quick prayer for those people or the building that I'm looking at. In my Christian club at school, the leaders at the time gave us ribbons to hang in our cars or on our backpacks, and whenever we would look at those, we were supposed to pray for our school. I see this as a makeshift prayer walk for when we can't physically be in the building. I got this my freshman year and I still have it hanging in my car and I pray for my school every single time that I look at it, the students and the faculty and the building itself. I ask God to lay there lay his hand over top of every single person in the building and just to pray for their health and their well-being during this time especially. Since we can't go into different buildings, I want you to visualize yourself walking through a building that you went to before quarantine or just a building that you still go to but it's more difficult to do a prayer walk since they're not since social distancing. I want you to go imagine yourself going through the building and touching the walls and seeing the people and just praying over them. If you're struggling to visualize the building, that's perfectly fine. Just imagine yourself walking through a building. It doesn't have to be the exact one. But I want you to, to make yourself feel like a physical presence in that place and just to bring God into that place to help the people that are there or that were there before quarantine started. The biggest buildings that come to my mind are the schools, even though they don't have students in them anymore, they still have all the students are linked to them and pray for all the students and hospitals especially. Walk through the hospital, touch the walls of the building, pray for the building to hold God's spirit within it and to see the people and to pray for their health again since they're in there and for the nurses to, and the doctors. Do this with as many buildings as you can think of that God is urging you to pray over and just be a heavenly presence in those places.
Hello, um, if you don't know me, I'm Hannah Bereda and I'm in the youth group here at Shawnee Church in the Nazarene. Um, I'm a junior and today I'm going to be telling you about purse stations and what they are and I will be giving you two examples of what you could do at home. <laughs> Alright, so purse stations are uh, a way to get closer to God through prayer and it can look very differently depending on your posture in prayer or um, what you're doing because prayer stations look really really different um, but um, you can yeah so <laughs> you have sensory prayer stations you can put your hand in sand water and uh, rocks and feeling it and um, you can have prompts to it and and praying for people who are sick um, for family for those in the war um, there is you know there's so much we could pray for and it's truly incredible um, prayer uh, stations could look like having music in the background soft um, I like playing my calm Christian music on Spotify. Um, it really helps me um, get in the mood of the prayer if I'm doing prayer stations. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah. You can also look like drawing um, your prayers, drawing your family. Um, if you're drawing other stuff, it can look like so many things. That's what's so good about um, prayer stations that it, it's just not one thing. It's many things, so it never gets boring, is what I'm gonna say. <laughs> it's always interesting and seeing how different people uh, make up new ones, and it's really cool. So I'm gonna. <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> um, so the two that I have for you today are um, what are you grateful for? Um, so you're going to be praying for what you're grateful for, but what you, you will need is a piece of paper um, and any uh, writing utensil. Um, if you're doing this with the family, I would suggest getting a really big paper and like writing the date on it or well, for any of these, writing the date on it. Um, and then you're going to put all the things you're grateful for and as a family pray for all these things and maybe ask your children or your husband or wife um what uh why you're grateful for it um you don't have to but you can and then pray as a family or if you're alone pray for these and the next one is Pray for those who have hurt you in the past or in the uh, present. Um, and you guys will need to get yet again a piece of paper and any writing utensil. But you're going to be um, writing uh, about this person who has hurt you. You'll be praying for them. For um, You can pray for wisdom. Um, for peace in their life that if um the reasons they hurt you is because they grew up in a bad situation and that's what um helped them be the way what it did um you could pray for that and depending on how they hurt you you could pray um for them in that way i've had multiple people hurt me in different ways and one that i will always remember is that someone told me that something would bad would happen to my mother when I was young. I'm not going to say specifics because I still get hurt by it even though I shouldn't because I've, I've been over it. But I have prayed over it and I did this and it helped me a lot. So, yes. But on this piece of paper, you're going to be writing um, a new ending to that story, to whatever happened to you. Uh, with this person, um, you're just gonna make it happy and make it different.
Hi guys, my name is Kiana Burke and this past school year um, I have been an intern with the youth here at Shawnee Nazarene and today I just want to lead you guys in a little prayer exercise. Um, it's one that I have been doing for quite a few years now to kind of start off my year um, and that is I pick a word for my year. So I was looking through my journal tonight and in the very beginning of it, I have my word for 2019, which was aware. And that was my word that really stuck with me the entire year. And I just wanted to be more aware of God's presence in my day-to-day -day life. And then kind of in the middle of my journal, um, I have my word for 2020, which was enjoy. And this year, I just really wanted to focus on enjoying God's presence um, enjoying the people around me, enjoying creation, and just enjoying life fully. Um, I think a couple years ago, my word was purpose. I was really searching to um, find purpose in everything that I do. And so um, definitely your word can totally vary. Um, obviously, it's not the start of a new year, but every day is a new beginning. And um, this can be your word for the end of quarantine time, or this can be like you can find a word for maybe your summer that's like we're starting it now. So maybe for the entire um, summer, this is kind of your word or maybe it will be your word for this next school year or whatever season of life that you're going through. And so um, I just normally what I do is I pray. I spend some time in prayer about um, what word do I feel like God really wants to use to shape um, my upcoming season of life. And so that's kind of um, my first part of my prayer. And then whenever a word just keeps coming to mind or um, a word has been standing out to me, that's kind of when I grab onto that word and um, I start praying again. I start asking, what does this word mean um, in my relationship with God, in my relationship with those around me, in my relationship with myself? And so those are kind of the three main questions I ask about the word. Um, and I just pray those questions honestly, and I let God kind of lead in what that looks like and if that's the word for me. And so really there's no right or wrong way to do this. I just wanted to encourage you guys that um, the word um, of the year has kind of been something that has shaped me. And there have been times during the year where I've completely forgotten my word. Like it has not been something where I look to every morning and um, I focus on that. But whenever I do completely forget it, normally God does something crazy in my life that causes me to remember it again. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's hard. But in either of those situations, um, whenever I realize and I remember my word, it really grounds me and it really reminds me that, oh yes, this is what I'm searching for. This is what I'm following. This is what God's trying to teach me in this time because um, I prayed about it. God kind of gave me that word. And so there are promises that come with that. And so um, today I just encourage you guys to pray, ask those questions, um, kind of let God put a word on your heart. It might be take looking in the Bible and finding a word or it might take, you know, while you're listening to music, a word just keeps coming up. Um, just be okay with the fact that God might not exactly give you a word. Be okay with the fact that it might be um, small nudges towards a word. Um, and so I just encourage you guys to um, do that prayer exercise, see, see where it leads you. And um, I'll be praying that for all of you that this can be something that is super helpful and super transforming. Bye guys.